All right, our next speakers are TK, Chairman of the Board and CTO, uh, CEO of Midokura, and Dan Dimitrio, CTO of Midokura. TK has a wealth of experience in technology startups and the Japanese IT industry, where he served in top management positions. As CTO, Dan leads the R&D team for advanced development of edge computing and AI technologies. Today, they will be talking about the Wedge project, Edge AI enabled by Wasm. Please help me welcome TK and Dan. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Um, uh, my name is Tatsukato. Uh, just call me TK. Uh, it's hard to pronounce. And uh, the, Hi, <laughs> my welcome. business partner. Uh, it's pretty short. Uh, let me begin with uh, uh, <coughs> our presentation. Um, okay. So uh, let me give you a brief into the uh, company introduction first. Um, uh, we started the company in 2010, uh, born in Tokyo. Uh, we were developing a network virtualization. Uh, it's called Minonet, uh, fully open sourced uh, by using uh, uh, overlay technology at that time. Um, after that, uh, we did the uh, pivot of business focus to edge computing for industry IoT. And in 2019, uh, Sony acquired us, and now we are 100% subsidiary of Sony Semiconductor Solutions. Um, <coughs> our pedigree is in uh, uh, distributed uh, computing and the system, <coughs> large uh, scale system. Um, <laughs> we are now uh, provide a key technology to Sony uh, for, uh, for the coming era of edge AI. Okay, uh, next, uh, Aetherios. Uh, as you may not know, uh, Sony has uh, not less than 60% of uh, market share in vision sensor, as well as uh, related, uh, various related uh, vision technology assets. Um, <laughs> they provide an Aetherios uh, solution platform uh, over the world, uh, targeting at the solution provider and the AI developers. <coughs> Uh, I don't want to <laughs> this sentence uh, uh, in the slide. Uh, okay. Uh, the next is my part, uh, last one. Um, <clears throat> what needs of Aetherius give us to our wedge project? A uh, couple of reasons comes from uh, actual real use cases. Uh, I don't want <laughs> to mention all, uh, but let me give you some. One is they like to have tiny ML uh, 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 run on uh, uh, IMX 500, which Sony invented world first uh, DSP stacked with uh, Shimo sensors. Two uh, is uh, they like to accomplish uh, sensor fusion world where other non RGB sensor can run on. Uh, uh, low capability device like uh, MCU uh, with RTOS. Mm -hmm. The last one, uh, this is more critical uh, to them. Uh, since HAI industry vertical requires security, uh, they have to secure um, trusted execution environment for uh, edge native uh, applications. That's why our <laughs> uh, what, uh, wedge project was born. Okay, so I take it, I hand it over to Dan. Uh, please, Dan. Thank you. Okay. So some challenges of development for IoT devices, which some of you may know. One is development in C is hard. You know, maybe not for everybody, but for some some people it's hard, especially in the embedded world where there's very little memory and lots of other constraints. And code is not very portable per se. Because of the architecture is, is one thing, but also because of the OS. Like, there's no standard OS. It's super fragmented in the, in the embedded space. And uh, memory isolation, which we take for granted on, this, you know, on Linux on servers, does not exist in microcontrollers. So everything is running in real mode, essentially. Um, these RTOSs, you know, if you can call it an operating system, you know, aren't designed for multi-user at all. So the syscall interface is really not like, secured well to do capabilities and such. 
And dynamic loading is sometimes not supported at all. Like you need to recompile and rebuild the entire OS image to, to make a software change. And if it is, it's not safe because you might load some code that is gonna crash the system. Um, and the last one, not that important, but the, the development language, you know, might be completely different between the, your cloud application and the, and the embedded. And the embedded is gonna be C and the cloud is gonna be something else, probably. Um, another point here is, you know, some pain points of IoT devices and, you know, uh, vision cameras, like security cameras. One is, after deploying the product, after shipping the product, typically you don't change the functionality, like, ever. That's it. Um, and on the security front, it's practically not possible to find vulnerabilities all ahead of time. Like, that would be great, but it's not going to happen. So you need to patch things. So these are some of the motivation, motivating factors for why we, uh, why we did this. So three goals of, of our project. Um, one is to solve these uh, security and isolation problems. Actually, I put that in third place for some reason. Um, and then that was like our initial motivation. Let's solve this isolation sandboxing issue. And then we started getting the idea of, hey, we could try to enable like a developer ecosystem by creating a, a plug-in architecture and SDKs and so on based on this because we can do that uh, potentially in different languages. So what is, what is Wedge? You know, obviously the W stands for WebAssembly at this point uh, at the edge. So Wedge is a couple of things. It, it integrates the entire IoT uh, device lifecycle. So it runs alongside an IoT platform. We didn't develop the IoT platform per se. We can use uh, like, you know, we actually use a, a project called ThingsBoard for our development. Maybe you've heard of that. Where we could do AWS IoT or, or anything else really. And then the, the system uh, also has this, this part of creating the application, deploying the application, and then doing the whole lifecycle management. Um, now since, th that's quite generic, th that part, right? But since we're dealing with uh, vision sensors mostly, we developed this model called the vision sensing application, which again, in the SDK, uh, you can, the, use, the developer has access to um, certain interfaces like controlling the sensor, uh, accessing uh, image manipulation um, functions that we've actually implemented with OpenCV at the moment. Um, and essentially you can break down the application into multiple modules uh, that are kind of decoupled so that you can, you know, partially for code reuse and also partially for, for better isolation. Okay, uh, so Wedge, it consists of two parts. One is the Wedge cloud, which is kind of running uh, on the server side alongside the, the back end of the, of the IoT platform and has a REST interface and so on. That's what the developer would interact with via REST API uh, to you know, register modules, create a deployment manifest, you know, kind of describing the application, and the, the, do the lifecycle management of the application, okay? And one important point is that uh, we do AOT compilation, and so that all happens in the cloud, you know, so the, that system knows about the different target uh, device types, and it figures out what, uh, you know, which compiler tool chain it has to use, you know, that all that is running uh, in the cloud and it's in containers and whatnot. Um, and then the agent side, you know, basically it's, you know, I think we've seen this a couple of times, the agent basically wraps the, the WebAssembly uh, runtime and calls it in a particular way and exposes certain uh, native uh, libraries and, and uh, you know, device drivers and OS features. Well, we use Whammer because that's what fits on, on tiny devices. Um, and again, I should mention that we're dealing with a variety of, potentially a variety of, of operating systems. So at the moment we run on Linux, you know, just because we, we do development there and whatnot. And uh, primarily we use a real-time OS called NutX, N-U-T-T-X. Um, that's because that's what uh, Sony is using for various uh, uh, hardware platforms. But we can support others. And then we have, besides WASI, we have Wedge Services APIs, which includes a couple different things. Um, one is sensor interface. And this is, uh, we will try to standardize this. We're gonna make a proposal, WASI sensor, you know, for controlling, you know, sensors, uh, hopefully all kinds of sensors, but particularly, you know, uh, CMOS uh, image sensors. Um, and communications, so we, we have various types of communication, both the kind of module to module communication, which currently is a bit custom, you know, hopefully we can use components for that when, when that's uh, ready. 
uh, but also like off the box communication, like device to device, pub sub stuff type of uh, communication, as well as uh, HTTP and access to blob storage and, and so on. So we have various types of uh, primitives like that. And then we have WASI and then as well, which is if there's a, um, like an accelerator on the device, uh, or even if it's in software, you know, we use WASI and then to uh, do the inferencing. Although IMX 500 is a little different. If you want to learn about that, there's something on, on the website that actually has an inline accelerator where the image just passes through the DSP and then you know, comes out the other side. So it's not like a, a thing you have to call. You know, it just happens on every frame. It's triggered. And we also have some data storage primitives like uh, blob storage access on the cloud and the local database. And OpenCV, because we need to do image manipulation for certain things. If you uh, went to the workshop, you, know, you, you saw or you can stop by the booth and check it out. OK. So I mentioned uh, that we wanted to provide these SDKs and in different languages. So what are some of the challenges of, of polyglot development in, in WASM? Uh, I think probably you all know very well. Uh, at the moment, these types of scripting languages are not the, the ones that are well supported in, in WASM, right? Uh, not yet, especially Python, right? And Python happens to be the one that's really, really uh, preferred by you know, AI and machine learning developers. So we really want, we really want Python. Um, at some point. Um, also, because we discovered something that's interesting, speaking of the, the programming language being different on the cloud and the, and the device, is that the training loop and the inferencing you know, are using different code. You know? And then sometimes that code should be exactly the same, but it's actually implemented differently, and sometimes that gets messed up. So that's something we want to we wanna correct. So we did implement something uh, that we call PyTOASM. It's not very original, and name clashes with somebody else's PyTOASM. Uh, but essentially, uh, we have a limited support you know, of, uh, of Python uh, in, in our module framework. Uh, but um, we want to move to something much more supported and, and, and standardized uh, as soon as possible. And what's, going, what's coming up next? Uh, well, we are definitely going to stay engaged with this uh, ecosystem. This was a really great conference. Um, we are contributing to Whammer upstream. So we have uh, dedicated developers for that. Uh, we would like to open source Wedge uh, if the corporate masters let us. Uh, and uh, you know, push our standardized uh, WASI uh, extensions like WASI Sensor into, into the community. And add more support for various types of MCUs, uh, especially like RISC-V uh, and R other RTOSs besides NotX. Thank you. <laughs>